guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Review time for the Crossman Phoenix 177 caliber nitro piston gun. Okay, so you guys know I bought one of these on Friday, and which is yesterday, and you probably by now have seen, if not, hopefully you'll go to take a look at, round two! Round two is where we had to replace it because the gun failed miserably. The nitro piston went funky on it. I was getting pull the trigger and the pellet wouldn't even leave the barrel and fire off that same pellet through the barrel finally and you could watch it drop in front of you or it might hit the target next time. Who knows what would happen. Anyways, so I took it back. They replaced it with their last one in stock. So let's hope this one stays together till they get more in stock at least because Canadian Tire North Bay, by the way, will not, will not refund you. I should have bought it at Sturgeon Falls. Because <laughs> um, they actually refunded me at Sturgeon Falls on that 11077 I bought. Anyways, um, I don't know why Canadian Tire North Bay is such the way they are, but the gun was clearly defective. So, uh, anyway, so I said, all right, well, we'll deal with a warranty. And they said, look, just deal with this one over the weekend. Monday, the manager will be back that deals with that department that has final say, anyways. So, if you have another problem, then you can deal with that person. And Maybe he'll say okay to a refund. Because um, with Sturgeon Falls, you have up to seven days. Um, but So I guess you can't get a refund on everything with Canadian Tire. But you do have one year over the counter. So I can keep going through these all I want for an entire year. And then after that, I deal with Crossman for the remaining four years. Because uh, this does come with a five-year warranty. Now, this Phoenix gun is only at Canadian Tire stores. Okay? And it's going to look exactly like this. Not like the picture on their website, however. Um, the gun, actually, the stock looks the same, but you won't find this piece here on the picture at Canadian Tire's website, which I thought, that's kind of freaking weird. But, hey, who knows? So, I think it's kind of cool. It's kind of weird, but it's kind of cool at the same time. But I guess it's part of their weight and vibration countermeasures because they did talk about that in some videos with their... Uh, Nitro Piston 2 version guns that are out now where they did add these um, big bohemus on here to help with balance and weight stuff and I don't know. Anyway, so I haven't cleaned the gun at all. I finally a few minutes ago put a couple of drops of Crossman silicone oil through because this is the stuff you're supposed to be using in Springers and in Nitro guns especially. Uh, by the way, a little tip for you guys. Take yourself a piece of plastic from a little baggie, put it over the top, and then screw it on and you won't get any leaks. Don't do this and it's going to leak all over the place. Because I've lost a few bottles like this and at 10 bucks a bottle, that stuff's expensive. Anyways, so um, part of the part 2 video or the, uh, you know, back at it again deal, um, I did uh, crony results and accuracy testing. Now the accuracy testing I did out in the wind, I figured, you know, I really want to get this dialed in and you can still dial in an air gun to be extremely accurate even with wind going on. Of course, not massive amounts of wind, but we're getting a bit of wind here and it's kind of an up and down, you get the odd gusts. So some pellets did get thrown off course because of wind, some because of me, because I'm using this, you know, really weird, funky makeshift bipod thing that kind of does a lot of this and a lot of this on me and it's hard to get it completely stable. And uh, to try and hold the gun stable in the hands on the table, it's, it's actually worse. That's actually better. Um, there is a way I, I found that you can actually put a bipod on this thing. Um, if this thing stays running long enough, I may just do that. Um, you know, because it could really benefit from a bipod from getting some really accurate shooting going on, especially if you want to really dead zero this thing in at least. Then at least you know that when you're free shooting, if you screw up, it's you or the wind. So, or it could be your pellet. You will get the odd flyer out of any air rifle out there in the market. Does not matter. Not all pellets are perfect. So, some are a little bit not quite the proper diameter. Some are, you know, a little tighter fit. Uh, some might have a defect somewhere, which throws them off a bit. So, you get the odd flyer, which is completely understandable. So, you're not going to be able to get any gun to shoot in the same exact hole all day long. Now, you could get several in a row <laughs> in the same hole or within the bullseye without a problem. That can be done. I've done it myself. But certainly not an all-day-long experience of non-stop shooting. It's just not going to happen. Uh, not with these anyways. So, um, now, I have some pet peeves about this gun. It has not failed. 
I have over 300 rounds through this thing today. Um, well over 300, and not one hiccup. Now, they said to lube it after 100 shots. Well, I went to over 300, and I finally just lubed it. So I'm going to let that silicone oil sit in there overnight and work its way through. And then tomorrow I'm going to go out shooting again. And so you will find that there will be an update review at some point on this rifle. Um, now, what I'm going to tell you is I have not used the open sights on this. Um, I did not even bore sight this thing in this time. Um, I just thought, you know, for giggles, you know, it is, you know, basically a good gun for probably up to 20 meters max. Um, you know, considering it is non-PAL version. Um, so I wonder how close they dialed the scope in from the factory. Turns out, they were actually fairly decent on their dial-in. I didn't have to do a whole lot of adjusting, but I did get some creeping going on. And I was kind of like, ah, it's got to be the wind, it's got to be the wind. So I finally checked the screws, and it turns out this thing will vibrate the screws loose. Now, it doesn't have any effect over the back mount, because the back mount has two screws, Plus it has your locker pin there for, uh, there's a hole in the, in the breech here so that you can lock it so you don't get scope creep, okay? Uh, so this back mount is perfectly fine. The front mount, however, only uses one screw and this screw came loose, oh, a good couple of turns and we got some looseness going on on these screws and one of these actually just started to come loose a little bit from all that shooting. So we're definitely getting some punchy vibration that we really don't want. So we're going to need some better quality mounts. But we also need a better quality scope too. Okay, It is a 4 times by 32 scope, which is not bad. Okay, At least you can adjust the focus on the eyepiece, which is good. Um, I would prefer zoom capability for one. But I also am going to put a Leapers 3x12 uh, Hunter Varmint Scope on here like I did with two of my other guns. One of which is my Crossman F11. If you've seen that on my channel, you'll know I put that scope on there. And man, that thing is sweet. And boy, does it ever hold well. Um, and I also put one on my 22 caliber QB78. Um, so, this scope is going to find its way to a CO2 or a pump-up gun. Uh, once I can order in a new leaper scope. So I guess I'm going to have to put off getting my single action army gun for a bit um, because a scope to me for this gun is a lot more of a priority than another pistol at this point. I want to really get this thing going good. Um, so the scope is not the world's best. It does work though. It can get you decent accuracy, but it's not going to get you um, perfect accuracy or near perfect. It's going to have a little bit of waver there, here and there. You know, it's just the way it happens to be. Um, nitro guns, even in non-PAL, they do have a hard slam to them. Yes, these things do run extremely quiet. I was surprised for a 177 compared to my F11 how quiet this thing is, even firing it into a cardboard box. I was like, did it fire? I know I saw the pellet hit and make a hole, you know. So it can be a very, very quiet gun, which is nice. Um, does have plenty of power to spare. It runs in the 480s to 490s on average uh, with a 7.4 grain Crossman Premier pointed pellet. The pointed pellets do dial in rather nicely on this gun. Um, every gun will pick its ammo. Mine's picking this one. Uh, the Canadian Air Gun Channel uh, is where I first saw this gun. Um, he found, I can't remember what pellet he found worked the best, but he tried um, the pointed, he's tried the uh, some RWS pellets and Black Widows. Black Widows, in this gun, forget it. You're not going to hit the broad side of a barn, okay? It's not going to happen. At least in my gun. Maybe if you bought one, same gun, the Black Widows might be that choice. Every gun, even the same model, is going to pick a different pellet a lot of times of which one it shoots accurately the best with, okay? Or the best top accuracy. And so far, we're at the winning circles with Crossman Premier Pointed. I still have other pellets I want to try yet in this thing, just to see if I can get something even tighter. So, but for today, for shooting out in the wind, trying to dial this thing in, I got some pretty respectable shots out of it, so that I was happy with. The gun, at least, I know has the capabilities to get dead on bullseyes. I just got to get a better scope with better mounts on it. That's all there is to it. I had to do it to the F11. So it's going to have to happen to this one too. 
Now, when you look at the Canadian Tire website, what you won't see on their picture is this big shroudy thing. You see it looks more like a normal gun other than the fact that the rifle stock will be the same. Your red trigger will be the same, your red butt plate will be the same, but the barrel won't look the same at all on the Canadian Tire website. Yet when you go into the store, they all look like this. And uh, Crossman started doing this from what I heard on uh, some of their NP2 videos for the Nitro Piston 2 series generation. Um, it has something to do with vibration and helping with accuracy to have this Bohemathon here. Um, I don't know, I think it makes it a little bit easier to cock too, to be honest, but I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Because you got more of a grip, eh? And it's the feel of the grip, I don't know. It does actually, I think, help for barrel uh, strengthness, definitely having something like this on here. Uh, because you've got a lot of thick plastic there covering that barrel, so you're not apt to be bending your barrel. Because some guys can be pretty violent when they cock their guns, and you don't need to. I mean, the amount of pressure it takes to cock this is really not that bad, okay? Now, here's something to be aware of. Number one, it is a nitro gun, but nitro guns and springers never dry fire them, ever, unless you want to cause damage, okay? And you will, trust me, okay? Uh, two, um, with these guns as well, um, they do not have safety decock. Like, you cannot pull down on this trigger when you've started to cock it, but you cannot safety decock the gun. So once you cock it, you must load a pellet in in order to fire it off. And you don't want to leave it cocked either because that's just kind of dumb. Um, and not good for the piston either to be, you know, under that kind of a load all the time. So if you're going to cock the gun, be prepared to shoot it with a pellet in it, okay? Otherwise, like I said, you can and you will damage the nitro piston system or even on a spring rifle, you will damage the springer system. Mostly the, the front seals go, but other damages can occur too at the same time when you dry fire them. They need that pellet there for a certain amount of back pressure. It's kind of like cars need a catalytic converter and a muffler to create a certain amount of back pressure, otherwise your car is going to go wonky. Uh, the, paint, the paint was flaking off of my trigger really bad right out of the box, so it was a crappy paint job on that. wasn't too happy about that. Uh, my other trigger was fine on my other gun, just the gun power plant failed. Um, but overall, I am happy with the gun. Um, hopefully I don't have to get another replacement. You know, hopefully this will last me until the warranty is up five years from now, and then I'll maybe put an upgraded nitro piston uh, in the thing. Who knows? Um, but, meantime, it's a good hard shooter. It's very accurate. Um, I have not shot it with iron sights, so I don't know what they're like, but I'm sure they're fine. Um, I may try that at some point. We'll see. Um, the weight of the gun, it's got some weight. And it is a, a, an adult gun. So I would say teenagers from about, I don't know, age 15, 16 and up into your adults. Um, perfect gun. You know, the weight would be suitable for um, people in that, you know, general size and age category. Because this sucker is pretty big. You know, this is like my Benjamin and my F11. They're adult level guns. You know, they're not kiddie guns. Um, besides, kid, little kids would have a hard time cocking this thing, that's for sure. Um, the quality of the build quality is actually very good on the gun. I'm very impressed with that. The machine work and everything is very nicely done. Um, so I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, there is a way to mount a bipod onto the stock. Um, we will wait, though, until it's time, and then we'll mount one. First we want to shoot another 500 or so rounds through and make sure we don't fail. Uh, then I'll mount a bipod. Um, but um, anyways, adjustable trigger. Uh, I did play around with it. Didn't really like it too much. It didn't really seem to do much. So I don't know, maybe I'm adjusting it wrong. I don't know. I'll have to look up and read up on adjustable triggers on these things and what does what for which direction you turn the screw and so on. Uh, I've never messed with my uh, other nitro gun or my uh, Benjamin uh, for the adjustable triggers uh, just because they're fine. This one has eh, got a bit of stiffness to it, but you know, maybe we can lighten it up, who knows. Um, but um, yeah, overall though, the gun is pretty decent. Um, I would probably mark this thing at, I would have to say probably about four out of five. Like, it's not the best scope. Um, 
there's still enough vibration in the gun, it's going to work your, your front clamp um, down here loose. It's going to definitely loosen the screws up here. And the thing is, you don't want to over tighten the top screws. Like, you really do want to tighten your bottom ones down really tight. And I did, like, I reefed them, okay, to make sure they were locked. And I still vibrated this one loose. Um, but your tube uh, screws, you don't want to over tighten those or you will crush the tube. Okay, so just be aware of that. You can only put a certain amount of pressure there. Um, you can have them tight, but not super tight. You know what I mean? Hopefully you know what I mean. But um, it's very easy to, uh, to line it up anyways, uh, even to square up the scope by eye. You can do that relatively easy. The caps, for the cover caps are plastic, so be very careful. They're a very fine thread, um, just like metal caps would be, so you got to kind of be really careful when you start threading them back on that you get them just right and they will go back on perfectly fine. If you don't, well, you're going to have to try again and until you get it to balance out, like I'm farting around with this thing right now, as you can tell, and I'm spinning it backwards first to find out where the catch point is, and hopefully we get the catch point properly. And that can be a little frustrating, but you're going to have the same thing happen with metal caps too. There we go. Now we got it. A little bit of farting around with it, but it gets her done. Anyways, so that's where I'm at with it. So do I recommend buying the thing? You can get a dud with any brand or maker or model of an air gun. It can happen. Obviously, it happened to me. Um, and I had one QB78 that went bad on me, so they did replace that at Canadian Tire. Um, but uh, otherwise, I would say for 250 bucks don't touch it. It's not worth 250 bucks, considering you're going to have to put a new scope and scope rings on this thing. Okay? Um, but, for the $200 sale price, definitely worth it. Okay? You can, I, I would say it's definitely worth 200 bucks, and then use the difference to go buy yourself a better scope. Um, mind you, you got to watch the scope you buy as a better scope, because it could cost you as much as the gun, depending on the scope you pick. Um, I like the Leapers 3x12x40 by uh, by Hunter Varmint Scopes. Now, they're pretty close to about $200 with tax and shipping in Canada from DNL Air Guns. They're not cheap, but they are really, really, really good scopes on Springers, on Nitro Guns, on anything you put them on. Okay, Any of the Leaper Scopes are great scopes. I've had a number of their different models over the years. I've never had a problem with any of them on any power plant. Okay, so I'm going to definitely put a 3 by 12 by 40 on this one, too. Um, and I found a place to get sunshades for scopes, so I'm going to order some sunshades when I get some money uh, for all my scopes, actually, because I like the, the fact that I'd be able to shoot in the sun a little bit better, but also at the same time, it gives a much meaner look to certain guns, too. Um, so anyways, this, this scope may end up on my MCX whenever I get that back from repair. Because uh, that gun has gone back to Sig Sauer or whatever company they send it to from Lafave Sport and Hobby. Um, and uh, from what I hear, Sig just does not fix the guns. They just send you a brand new one. So I'm waiting for that to come in. And uh, I'll have a new MCX to try out again. So that's this scope will go on that gun. Um, I th yeah, I think that's where this one's going to end up. Because that's not a very long range gun anyhow. So not for Canadian version. But anyway, guys, that's what I got for you on this one. Um, I will do an update review, though, to let you know if I blow the sucker up um, and what it took to do that, of course, you know. But so far, with over 300 rounds through it today and not one hiccup, that's a good sign that this is going to be a good gun. So let's cross our fingers on this one. But otherwise, I'd say try one out anyways. You do have that one-year over-the-counter return warranty, and it's only on sale this week only at Canadian Tire. So if you are in Canada and you're an American and you want to try something different, hey, go into the local Canadian Tire store wherever you're visiting, grab one. If you're in Canada, of course, already, you know where to go. Um, and uh, till then, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.